Good morning. Today we'll be traveling from Winslow, Arizona to the Santa Monica Pier, which is the end of Route 66. So let's get started. From the town of Winslow, we head west on Route 66, past the town of Two Guns, and arrive at the Twin Arrows Trading Post. Construction of the Twin Arrows Trading Post first started in 1945, but was finished a few years later by another owner, Ted Griffiths, who opened it as the Canyon Padre Trading Post. The Griffiths also added a prefabricated Valentine Diner to the site. In 1955, the Troxels bought the trading post and renamed it the Twin Arrows Trading Post. The twin arrows that you see on the site are made from telephone poles. The trading post was closed in 1990. It reopened briefly in 1995 and now sits abandoned. It's just south of Interstate 40 at exit 219. Back on the road, we head through Flagstaff and Williams on our way to Seligman and Delgadillo's snow-capped drive-in. In 1953, Juan and Mary Delgadillo opened the snow-capped drive-in. Juan's sense of humor was legendary and he kept his customers entertained as well as fed. When he passed in 2004, his son John and daughter Cecilia took over running the snow cap. From Seligman, we head west to Kingman, then south before crossing the Colorado River and entering California. Our first stop is Needles in the El Garces. Built to suggest a Greek temple, the El Garces Hotel, Restaurant, and Passenger Depot opened in 1908. The Fred Harvey Company managed the El Garces, and in the Harvey House tradition, it was opulent. In 1949, as more Americans were traveling by car than by rail, the El Garces closed. Like the Harvey House La Posada we looked at in the last episode, the El Garces became offices for the Santa Fe Railroad until 1988. The City of Needles purchased the building in 1999 with the intent of restoring it. From Needles we head into the California desert and come to the abandoned Roadrunner Retreat just east of Amboy. In its heyday, the Roadrunner Retreat consisted of a restaurant and a gas station. It opened in 1962. Helen Tall's shown here, was one of the original owners. The Roadrunner closed in 1973 after Interstate 40 bypassed this section of the desert. The property is sitting abandoned and unfortunately a fire burned through the contents of the cafe building in 2020 after these images were made. Hopping back on the road and heading 10 miles west, we come to Amboy in the historic Roy's Motel Cafe. Roy's Motel Cafe was first opened as a gas station by Roy Crowell in 1938. At that time, it also provided auto service and was known as Roy's Garage. Roy's son-in-law built a storage building next to the garage to store parts, but his wife at that time, Betty, turned the store into a cafe. Eventually, cabins were built for lodging, and in 1959, the famous Roy's Motel sign was installed, and the mid-century modern guest reception building was constructed. Roy's closed in 1978, and in 2003, it was purchased by philanthropist Albert Okura, who has overseen the restoration of the cafe building and the guest reception building. The cabins, as seen here, have been used for various art exhibits. Leaving Roy's, we continue west to the Baghdad Cafe. Well, more accurately, we continue west to Baghdad, California. Here is an image of the original Baghdad Cafe. And here is the original Baghdad Cafe now. In fact, this is the whole town of Baghdad, California in its present state. This tree. Further down the road, we come to the new Baghdad Cafe in Newberry, California. In the 1980s, German filmmaker Percy Adlin wrote and directed the film Baghdad Cafe. But by that time, the original Baghdad Cafe was long gone. So they shot the film down the road at the Sidewinder Cafe in Newberry, California. So in 1995, the Sidewinder Cafe decided to rename itself the Baghdad Cafe, and so it remains today. We head west through Barstow and then south to San Bernardino and come to the Wigwam Village No. 7. Frank Redford, the inventor of the Wigwam Village concept, built this property for himself in the late 1940s. This is the largest Wigwam Village with a double row of teepees as opposed to the single row at the other villages. It was originally successful but eventually fell on hard times and for a while the teepees were rented out by the hour. 
In 2002, the Patel family purchased this motel and did a beautiful job of restoration. Heading further west on 66, we come to Pasadena and the Fair Oaks Pharmacy. Built in 1915 and called the South Pasadena Pharmacy, the name changed a few times until the early 1940s when it became the Fair Oaks Pharmacy and Soda Fountain. Entering this bright, colorful soda fountain is like taking a trip back in time. Finally, we take in our last stretch of the Mother Road and find ourselves at the Santa Monica Pier. Opened in 1909, the pier is the end point of Route 66. After a drive through the Mojave Desert, the ocean air of the pier is a welcome relief. You can walk down to the beach and cool your toes in the cold Pacific water. There's also a beautiful carousel on the pier, which was built in 1922 and redone in 1990. And don't miss getting your picture taken under the 66 end of the trail sign like yours truly. Well, that's it. We made it to California. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that, a thumbs up is always appreciated. If you have any questions about anything that we covered in this series, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss future episode of Gems and Hidden Histories where we'll explore other routes throughout the United States. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.